So you hear a lot about sexual abuse in the JW community, um, but you never in the cover up, but you never hear about um, much about domestic abuse. Um, I grew up in a family where my mother was beaten almost every single day, um, at least every single week but uh, verbally, emotionally abused every single day <clears throat> in front of me and my sister. And we were raised Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, fifth generation Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, I remember about nine years old thinking that my dad was so powerful that I didn't even uh, feel I could pick up the phone to call the police because I would get killed. Um, I didn't even feel like I could have... Uh, get any help as a child um, that's how much influence uh, my dad had over us in the home and he would be disfellowshipped on and off for uh, drug abuse and things um, but he you know they always wanted us to go to the meetings and learn about Jehovah and we did and Jehovah was like um, a miracle to me and my sister because my dad was this way and we couldn't imagine how a father could be any other way so learning about Jehovah we really clung to that um, my point is uh, I was getting baptized at uh, 11 um, which is very typical and um, and I mean that because 11 years old you really don't know what you're doing uh, a lot of times Witnesses can be baptized as young as 10, 9 years old. Um, anyway, so my mother went to an anointed brother, Tom Donahue, and she was telling him about, um, I was there, actually walked in the house. It was just me and my mom. I was young, uh, 10, 11 years old, and my mom was telling him about all the beatings and things that she was enduring and the physical uh, emotional abuse. Um, he even held a gun up to her car window with us in it trying to escape and told her that if she didn't pull in the driveway, he was going to blow her head off. So she puts the car in drive and she pulls back in that driveway because she knows he's not joking. And I remember looking out the passenger window and seeing um, my neighbors on Electra Street. Um, the lady's name was Beth. Um, staring at us in the driveway. And obviously she knew what was happening, but no one would help us. Um, that's what I remember the most. Everyone knowing, but no one would help us, or my mom. And I didn't understand that, so I guess that's why I felt like the police wouldn't do anything either. These people that care about us and love us, um, they're not pulling through for us. Anyway, so Brother Donahue uh, gave advice to my mom, and he told her that she was committed to this marriage and that um, unless it's uh, biblically uh, allowed to divorce, then she couldn't leave him. And I remember feeling just devastated, like, why? Why can't we get out of this? So she stayed with my dad and put up with that abuse for many years. We did leave twice. Um, I think she, her common sense overcame her um, and she did get away, but then we would go back. And it was just a terrifying way to live. And um, anyway, why don't we help each other? Why don't the elders encourage people to leave abusive situations? What if my dad had killed my mom? You know, uh, there's witnesses out there that need help that are living in these real life situations, regardless if they're witnesses or not. I mean, just because you're a Jehovah's Witness does not mean that you're sheltered from these circumstances. So you know you have sisters in this situation right now who need help help them you know don't sit there and be silent and watch this kind of abuse because if someone could have helped me and my sister I think our lives would be totally different anyway may the love of God be with you